What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here, and today I'm going to be doing an updated Waft Emitter video for the 1.3 update. Now, as we all know, the Waft Emitter was massively changed in 1.3, and there are a bunch of new raids you can do, so I'm going to quickly go ahead and cover everything, how it all works, and break it all down for you. Now, as you can see in front of me, I have a chest full of every single item you can put into the Waft Emitter, with an exception of four items. Three of them are the ant eggs. You can indeed put the ant eggs in the Waft Emitter, if you want to, uh, if for some reason you have them left over, but uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this, I'd just use ant parts, obviously why would you use the ant eggs, kind of confusing, but you have the option to do that, and the other is the termite king carapace, which you will actually need for the termite raids if you want to get a king, however we'll get into that later, but that's the other item I am missing from this chest, everything else is all you can put inside of the waft emitter in the 1.3 update. Now I'm going to quickly explain what each of these items summons. So we have these three items here, the three red ant parts for red ant raids, black ant parts for black ant raids, fire ant parts for fire ant raids, bombardier um, parts and glands are for bombardier raids, these are for bee raids, black ox raids, roly poly raids, black widow raids, ladybug and ladybird raids for these three, mosquito and tiger mosquito for these three. I should mention actually the roly poly ones is roly polies and sickly roly polies, not just regulars, moths for the moth stuff. Uh, this, these four right here are for stink bugs and shield bugs. The termite uh, chompers and parts and carapaces, which you can imagine them being there, are for the termite workers, soldiers and king. The king can be summoned from the waft emitter. The fungal growth is for infected raids. That's infected ladybugs, weevils, larva and mites. Those are the four enemies you can get there. No infected gnats in those, it's worth noting. The wolf spider fangs are for uh, wolf spiders and infected wolf spiders. The lava spikes are for lava and ladybird lava. The orc receivers can summon about 10 million different creatures. This ranges from fireflies, which you can't get through any other type of raid, dust mites, which you also can't get from any other type of raid, to black ox beetles, ladybirds, um, fire ants, I think. Basically, any orc creature you can get for, can be summoned from this raid. It is also worth noting you can get arc R's and taze T's. The taze T's you will need to get the unstable capacitor trinket. The only way to get that is from these raids specifically with the orc receivers. So, yeah, you can get a bunch of different enemies from these. The most important being the firefly and the dust mite, as there's no other way to raid those two enemies. Uh, we have spider chunks, which is for orb weavers and orb weaver juniors. And then down here, we have all of the wasp parts and wasp queen parts, which you can put into the waft emitter for wasp and wasp drone raids. However, I wouldn't use the wasp queen parts. They're just very, very expensive and hard to get. I'd just use the regular wasp parts if I was you. It's just a waste to use the queen parts. That is all the parts and the factions they're going to summon. We're going to get into the specifics now of what each of them are going to do specifically for these wafts. I'm going to give a huge shout out to Blahable from the Reddit of Grounded, who uh, made this whole document and spreadsheet, which will be linked in the description if anyone wants to use it. It gives you all the data you need. I'm going to be covering a lot of it in this video and basically yoinking it all. So a huge shout out to him. He data mined all of this and it's unbelievably useful information. So it's really, really good. Thank you again to him. Now we're going to start with the red ant faction first. So with the red ants, the parts are going to give you a spawn value of three or an anger value of three. The head is going to give you five and the mandible is going to give you seven. The egg does give you eight, so it's the most of any item, but it's only slightly more than a mandible, so you might as well just use the mandible. The red ant worker has a spawn cost of one and the red ant soldier has a spawn cost of three and they each are going to give you five science for killing them. So if you put in one red worker part, for example, that has a spawn value of three, you're either going to get a soldier or you're going to get three workers. If you get the soldier, you'll get 15 science. If you get three workers, you'll get 15 science as well. It'll always work out that you earn the same amount of science regardless of what types of enemies spawn. As far as I'm aware, it's what it looks like off of the calculations but the soldier because it costs three times as much to spawn gives you three times as much science no matter how few parts you put inside of this waft emitter with the ant raids all three of them you're always going to have a chance to get workers and soldiers you're not just going to be forced onto workers there's no minimum requirement there when it comes to the bombardier the part gives you a spawn value of five and the boiling gland gives you a spawn value of ten 
The cost to spawn a bombardier is four. So if you put in one boiling gland, for example, then you will you have a spawn value of ten. It's going to use up eight of that to summon two bombardiers, and I don't think you get a third bombardier. I think the rest of that spawn value just cancels out, unfortunately. But if you put two boiling glands in, that'll give you a spawn value of twenty, which will give you five bombardiers. So it's more efficient to try and calculate it so that you get the exact number you need in order to spawn as many as possible. Yet again, you're always going to get at least one bombardier in these raids, so that you don't have to worry about doing a certain number to get a certain type of spawn. With the bombardier as well, it's worth noting that you get 40 science per bombardier beetle. The bees are relatively similar. They have a spawn value for the fuzz of 13, and a stinger has a value of 16, with a bee costing 4 to spawn. So if you put one stinger in, you should get 4 bees spawning, which means you get quite a lot of bees. And each bee is going to give you 40 science when you kill it. It's not a crazy amount of science, but obviously these are very early game raids. Next we have the Black Ox Beetle. Now the parts are going to set you back a spawn value of 10 and the horns are going to give you a spawn value of 20 with the actual Black Ox Beetle himself costing 7 to spawn. So if you put one part in, you get one Black Ox Beetle. And a Black Ox Beetle is going to give you 140 raw science when you do a raid with just one Black Ox Beetle. So this one, again, you don't get that much raw science, but on the bigger scale with a bunch of Black Ox Beetles, you'd obviously start to build up that raw science and earn a bit more. Putting seven parts in here would actually give you 10 Black Ox Beetles, which is 1,400 raw science in return. So that's probably the best way to do this and the most efficient way to do this as well. Next, we have the Roly Poly. Now, the Roly Poly parts have a spawn value of 10, and the Roly Poly shell has a spawn value of 15, with both the regular Roly Poly and the sickly roly poly both costing you eight to summon so if you put in one part you're always going to get one roly poly put in two parts you get two roly polies the way i did this usually was put in two parts because i have one spawning on each side so i check each one to see if they are sickly or not the best way to do this by the way is if you go towards the roly poly if it aggros you on the waft emitter then that means it's a regular roly poly if it doesn't aggro you as you get close it's actually a sickly roly poly i think it's a bug in the game so if it doesn't aggro you and you need a specific gold card you know which is which now the sickly one is also slightly smaller but that's a much harder thing to tell it's much easier to tell based off of whether it just aggros you straight away if it doesn't aggro you it's a sickly if it does it's a regular roly-poly and then if you don't need a specific one you can check them both and if neither of them are the one you need go back to the waft emitter destroy it and this will end the raid instantly you do lose parts doing this but if you can afford to do that then i highly recommend it a roly poly is going to give you 120 raw science per kill, by the way. Next, we have the ladybug. Now, ladybug part is going to give you four spawn value. A head is going to give you seven. And a shell from a ladybird is going to give you ten for those three parts. To summon a ladybug, you have a spawn cost of four. To summon an infected ladybug, it has a spawn cost of 12. And for a ladybird, it's 15. So if you only put a ladybug part in here, you're always going to get one ladybug. You'll never get an infected or a ladybird. If you want to get a ladybird, you're going to at least need to put in four ladybug parts or three heads or two shells or a combination of those things as long as it adds up to 15 or higher. Now, if it is 15 or higher, it doesn't guarantee a ladybird. It just means there's a chance for a ladybird. You could also get an infected ladybug. You could also get a bunch of ladybugs. It's always going to vary and randomize it a bunch, but there are percentage chances that you can calculate of what you're going to get. Um, but I don't know them exactly for ladybugs and ladybirds. I know roughly some of them for some of the other bugs later on, which are very, very complicated. Now, a ladybug is going to give you 48 science. An infected ladybug is going to give you 144. And a ladybird is going to give you 180. However, in order to get the infected ladybug from the raid, you have to have plugged the haze. So if you haven't plugged the haze, you won't see infected ladybugs in your ladybug raids. So if you're trying to farm the ladybird, for example, don't plug the haze. It's also worth noting that you need to have killed the assistant manager to get the ladybird to spawn in the waft emitter raids. So if you only wanted to farm ladybugs for the gold card, you're best off doing this before killing the assistant manager and before plugging the haze, as this will only give you ladybugs in these raids. Next we have the mosquitoes. Now the mosquito beak is going to 
give you a spawn value of 10, the Blood Sack is a spawn value of 13, and the Tiger Mosquito Beak is a spawn value of 20, which is double that of the regular Mosquito. So those Tiger Mosquito Beaks are going to be getting put to good use by using them in these raids. A regular Mosquito is going to give you 30 raw science for a kill, and a Tiger is going to give you 70, with the regular Mosquito having a spawn cost of 3, and the Tiger Mosquito having a spawn cost of 7, which means that any amount of parts can give you either regular or Tiger Mosquitoes. However, the Tiger Mosquito won't spawn in these raids until you've beaten the Assistant Manager, so if you're trying to farm the regular Mosquito Gold card, you want to do this before killing the Assistant Manager with these raids. Obviously, not fun to do regardless, because flying insects are a pain for fighting waft emitters, but I have a tactic for that which I'll show later in the video. Next up, we have the Stink Bugs. Now, Stink Bug Path is going to give you a spawn value of 2, a Stink Bug Gas Sack is a spawn value of 5, a Green Shield Bug Path is a spawn value of 10, and a Super Stink Sack is a spawn value of 15. Now, in order to get a Stink Bug, you have a spawn cost of 5, and a, sh a Green Shield Bug is a spawn cost of 15. So with one super stink sack, you should be able to get a green shield bug. In order to get the green shield bug to spawn from these raids, you will have to beaten the assistant manager first. So if you haven't beaten the assistant manager, you'll just get stink bugs. If you have beaten it, then you will start to get the shield bugs appearing in these raids. A stink bug is going to give you 40 raw science and a shield bug is going to give you 120. Yet again, not that much raw science from these raids. Next we have Lava Raids. In order to do these, you can only spend Lava Spikes with them giving you a spawn value of 8. Now, this will give you the opportunity to get every Lava, however, because the regular Lava only has a cost of 3, the Infected has a cost of 6, and the Ladybird Lava has a cost of 8. So one Spike can get you any of these three types of Lava, in theory. However, I feel like you probably have to put in a couple to get that Ladybird Lava. You do also have to have beaten the Assistant Manager to get the Ladybird Lava to spawn from these raids. There's no requirement for the regular or Infected to be spawning from these raids, though. The science you're going to get is 15 from a regular Lava, 30 from an infected and 40 from the ladybird lava next we have the infected raids which cost fungal growth now fungal growth has a spawn value of two the infected weevil is going to have a spawn cost of one the mite has a cost of one the lava has a cost of two and the ladybug has a cost of five now this is the biggest scam raid in the game because you only get two science from a weevil two science from a mite four science from a lava, and ten from a ladybug. So you're lucky if you're doing one of these raids and you can get more than 50 raw science. That's how horribly bad these raids are for farming science, but obviously if you need the gold cards, then you have to do it, so you have no choice. Now it does also say that if you plug the haze canister, you can get the infected wolf spider, but it has a spawn cost of 100, and fungal growth only has a spawn value of 2. So you'd have to put in 50 fungal growth, which is quite literally impossible. So in theory, you can get it, but it's actually impossible to get. So this is kind of dumb and it's impossible to get. I think it used to be possible to get from these raids, but you can't get him from these raids anymore. You can only get him from wolf spider raids. Since we're on the topic of wolf spider raids, we'll touch on these next. Spider fangs give you a spawn value of 8, the wolf spider has a spawn cost of 5, and the infected wolf spider has a spawn cost of 100. Which means if you want to spawn the infected wolf spider, you need to put 13 wolf spider fangs into the waft emitter for about a 50% chance to spawn him. The more fangs you put in, the higher it increases the odds of spawning him, and killing him will give you 2,000 raw science, which is pretty nice, but absolutely not worth it, and especially when it took me over 300 kills to get this gold card, it costs a lot of spider fangs, and it is way too overpriced, it is insanity, um, but yes, you can get the infected wolf spider from these raids, it's just going to cost you a lot of raw science, or you're going to be reloading for a long, long time. Regular wolf spiders, for the record, give you 100 raw science per kill. It's worth noting the infected wolf spider only spawns once you've plugged the haze canister, of course, so you don't have to worry about it if you haven't plugged it yet and you just want to farm that wolf spider gold card. Next we have the Orb Weavers, for these you need the Spider Chunks obviously which give you a spawn value of 4, the Juniors have a spawn cost of 2, the Orb Weavers have a spawn cost of 4, the Juniors give you 20 Raw Science, the Regulars give you 40 Raw Science, these ones are pretty simple to do. Uh, yeah, if you're looking for the, ju the Junior or the Orb Weaver cards, you are going to need to do these raids probably. Next we're going to cover the Ominent Raids, now these are the most complicated ones in the game. Each Orc Receiver is going to give a spawn value of 10. Um, and there's a million enemies this can spawn. So you can get the Orc Fire Ant, who gets you, who costs one and gives you 25 science. The Orc Dust Mite, who costs two and gives you 50 raw science. 
The Orc Fire Soldier Ant costs 3, gives you 75 raw science. The Orc Firefly costs 3 and gives you 75 raw science. The Orc Bombardier costs 4 and gives you 100 raw science. The Orc Weaver costs 4 and gives you 100 raw science. The Taze T costs 4 and gives you 100 raw science. The Arc R costs 4, gives you 100 raw science. The Mosquito costs 5 and gives you 125 raw science. I'm pretty sure that's a Tiger Mosquito. The Black Ox Beetle costs 6, gives you 150 raw science. The Ladybird costs 6, gives you 150 raw science. So in theory, you can get any of these enemies from just a single Orc emitter, but I'd recommend putting in a bunch to spawn in more and more enemies. You've got to be careful though, as the flying enemies can be very dangerous for that waft emitter. Next we have the Moths, who have a spawn cost of 5 and give 100 raw science per kill. Uh, now, these guys are very dangerous, and the Fuzz is going to have a spawn value of 8, and the Scale is going to have a spawn value of 10. I recommend just putting in one piece of Fuzz and just calling it there. Just a single piece of Fuzz to fight a single enemy. I don't recommend putting in more than one. Fighting a bunch of Moths at once is very dangerous and difficult to do, and it's definitely not something that you should be doing because... It's not easy in the slightest, unless you're very, very confident in your abilities. Next up, of course, we have the Widow. The Fangs are going to give you a spawn value of 10. The Venom gives you a spawn value of 25, with the Widow itself costing 20 to spawn. Now, it does give you 1,000 raw science per Widow kill. This is the best spawn per cost in the game of any single bug, and it's definitely the best one to do if you're looking to farm raw science now obviously widows can be a little tricky to kill in the new update but if you've got the right build you can definitely do these raids even if you're just doing one black widow at a time it's still worth all the science you're gonna make from it the wasp raids now the wasps are going to have a spawn cost of 8, the drones have a spawn cost of 12, the wasp regulars are going to give you 160 raw science, the drones give you 240 per kill. The paper has a spawn value of 4, which means it can get you a regular wasp, the part has a value of 4, the leg has a value of 6, so 2 legs will get you a drone, or 3 parts, or 3 paper. I wouldn't recommend using the paper because you should probably save that for wasp adults for the record. A wasp queen chunk has a value of 8, and the head and wings have a value of 10 each, but again, I wouldn't use these wasp queen parts, they're way too expensive to use. Last but not least, which I nearly forgot, we have the termites. The worker has a spawn cost of 2, the soldier has a spawn cost of 5, and the king has a spawn cost of 100. 100. Uh, you're going to get 20 science per worker, 50 per soldier, and 1000 for each king you kill. The Chompers give you a spawn value of 6, the Parts give you a spawn value of 6, and the Termite King Carapace gives you a spawn value of 10. Now, it's worth noting that there are 15 slots inside of the Waft Emitter, which means if you use all Parts or all Chompers or a mixture of both, since they only have a value of 6, that can only get you to a spawn total of 90. You need to use a minimum of 3 Termite King Carapace in order to get the chance to have a King in these raids. It is only going to be a 50% chance with 3 of them, but it's the only chance you have. The more King Carapace you put in, the more chance you will get, but you're obviously going to run out of Carapace because the King, when you kill him in these raids, only gives you one Carapace back. So you are going to get scammed. I would highly recommend use Rascal Rogue and the Sticky Fingers Trinket here for a chance at stealing more King Carapace. If you can get an average of two per King raid, then you are breaking even because of the science that you get from killing these guys, and you can use the Super Duper to Duper Carapace, which costs a thousand raw science, so you will roughly break even on this, but it's still extremely expensive, and I don't really recommend you do it if I'm completely honest. The King is one of the hardest gold cards to get, alongside the Infected Wolf Spider. They're definitely the two hardest in the game right now, in terms of costs on these raids, or time spent waiting for them to respawn. Last but not least, I'm going to show off a couple of locations where I would want to put the Waft Emitter, if I were you, in the game to maximise your fights and give you the best chance of fighting these enemies. Now, the first area is right here. We are over by the Oak Tree, as you can see by my map. Uh, all you've got to do is come over here and then make this little jump across to this little island. You'll see my Waft Emitter is right over here. Now, I put it over here, and you're going to need, if you do do this, to put a little clay ramp inside the wall right here. Just a little tiny clay ramp. The reason you have to do this is because it makes it so the enemies think they can get there. If you don't put that ramp there, they don't realize they can get to that location. Uh, and then when you do start this raid, you want to make sure you don't have too much built in this direction, especially on the ground. So that's going to make the enemies spawn on the left and the right side of this grass, which makes it really easy to get to them. They can't get to the waft emitter. This does not work for flying enemies. It only works for ground-based enemies. This is, in my opinion, the best location. 
location for the ground-based enemies. I have seen some other locations like in the hedge, for example, there's one where you can glitch it all out and make it not work. This one isn't a glitch. This one, you have to actually fight the enemies properly, um, but this is my favorite location to use. Then for the flying enemies, you're gonna to want to come to the upper yard right here and just place the waft emitter in the middle here. Um, for some reason, the enemies will just attack the Javamatic modules, uh, the flying enemies in particular. The ground enemies don't do the same thing, so it doesn't really work for them. But with the flying enemies, they're just gonna attack the mixer module and that's just gonna break it all away. Um, and they can't actually damage the mixer module, they won't break it or anything, uh, but they will just keep attacking it over and over and you can just attack the enemies. They will aggro onto you once you start attacking them, but they'll never aggro onto the waft emitter. Uh, the only reason they'll break the waft emitter is with moths, for example, if they do that dust attack and you're standing near the waft emitter when they do it, because they're aiming at you, it'll also coincidentally hit the waft emitter, which will break it eventually, so you do have to be slightly careful, but as long as you're careful with that, you should be completely fine to farm those flying creatures. That's going to call it for this video. Hopefully that's given you a good breakdown of how the waft emitter works in Grounded 1.3. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.